Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And this morning, we're going to talk about dynamic prop balance. And in this case, we're going to use a specific example on a tiger. Makes all the math a lot easier. And we're going to do it with some variants about where to place the weight. And as you can see here, these are all the pieces that play a part. We have the accelerometer. We have the, the readout gauge. This is an older Dynavibe, but we're going to take it back to the older ones and also where we put the weights on the flywheel and how all that's going to go. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this video, so stay tuned for a bit more information. So as part of the balancing, we're, we're going to be putting test weights on the um, ring gear, and here's how we calculate a test weight. There's a basic formula that comes with your DynaVibe or whatever you're using, and this is how the formula looks. So let's briefly look at the formula. We're going to generate a test weight, and this is the engine horsepower divided by 10, plus the 30, which is an integration constant, times the inches per second. Now that inches per second is a velocity, not an acceleration, and that's important to know. So after we take our first reading, we get a test weight, we multiply that by the 48 that we get for the Tiger, and we place that weight on the engine. Now that IPS is really just inches per second, a velocity again, and when we do the math, we find out here that we need um, we take our first reading and it's 0.24 at 320 We have a heavy spot at 322 degrees. So we want to add the weight at 142. The closest hole is 150. So we're going to add the weight there. But that's assuming here, looking at the flywheel, that those holes where that weight goes is on a one foot radius. And we're actually dealing with five and three eighths inches. So we have to change our calculation a bit. So here's your industrial scale on vibration and 0.15 is what we're shooting for. Here's another scale that kind of tells you where we want to stay in the green. That's what we want to move to. So we looked at the calculation on that weight. So we're going to be adding 26 grams, 25.71 by theory, to the ring gear right here. And we're going to go ahead and try to balance out this engine. By the way, math like this is only required on the older systems. Talk about what we have here. We have a starter ring gear assembly off the front of our airplane. You have a spot for your uh, alternator belt to come through the back and that's why when you put the bolts on stand by so when the bolts go on the airplane they come in from the back side to those 12 holes and they go through like that that way the weights are all up here behind the propeller but not going to be interfering with the belt as it swings through so the bolts always go in through the back side on the Lycomings now let's talk about the players here's a ring gear You've got your six prop bolts for the flange up in the front, and that's what holds that all together, just like that. Then you also have these 12 holes at 30 degrees around the airplane, as well as your timing mark for top dead center and 25 before top dead center marks on the flywheel. But these holes are spaced at 30 degrees. Um, so every 30 degrees you can put a weight on the airplane and we'll talk about what happens if you have a weight that has to go in between the two. Let's talk about the other players uh, in the game of dynamic prop balancing. We're going to be adding weights to the flywheel to uh, smooth out the engine and take out any little lobe of weight that runs around. We're going to add weight to the other side. So the players are, we have an A and 4 and a 363 nut, it's a nylock nut, uh, to hold the weights all in these holes. Now this is an AN4-12A and with the nut it weighs 14 grams. If this was an AN4-10A it would weigh 12 grams with the nut. So this is one of the players. You've got a, a 12 or 14 gram nut going one place and then you have the washers we put on. You have the 960 L series washers. This is a dash 4 it weighs 0.6 grams. It's a very, very thin washer. Weighing three times as much is the AN960 regular washer. And this is the Dash 4. And it weighs two grams. And finally, we have the AN974 washer, which is eight grams. And it's easy to remember, especially if you write the weights on the back of the uh, washers so you can read them all. We have them on the other washers as well. So those are the players in your weight game. Now let's talk about how we distribute that weight around the airplane. Now the way you can put the weights around it here we're using the 12 holes in the flywheel and that's how we do it. You can also get fractional distances in there. The other way for purists is to attach the weights to the outside of the spinner 
and here's an example and you can see that it looks like a double stack because you're looking at the other side in the polished spinner but you can put them on the spinner as well to get them exactly where you want them to be for weight now one school of thought is I know someone who when they balance a prop they first put a bolt in every hole with a nut and a washer around it and then they adjust as they need to get down and that person can dial their um, their IPS down to almost zero or at zero but let's take a look at an example from here from Yankee Aviation and how we're going to distribute that weight between two holes we're going to skip over very quickly putting your accelerometer putting tape on the back of your prop and also to where we used to keep our log entries we used to do them on scraps of paper now we have a form so just enjoy all those videos we get back to the final stages and the variants of where to place a weight and as you can see here during the test run there's always one person to operate the airplane and one person taking the data in the passenger seat making sure that you get a good reading at a good stable RPM. And let me just add a note here. This was at a Grum and Pollock Association wrench bending, and this is Don Goins' beautiful Tiger with a new paint job. So as you can see here, we at Yankee Aviation, we have a special sheet we use for each run. We make notes of what we do, what we add until we get to our final reading. So we have a whole list of things we did to get to that final reading to show you how we got there. So here we have two of the holes. These are 30 degrees apart. But let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to put a weight right here 15 degrees off of each of these holes. So we could take the weight, and let's for an example take 32 grams. We could put 16 grams here, 16 grams here. And when you do the vector math, it would be the same thing as adding 31 grams right here. It's... Um, 15.45 if you do the math times the cosine of 15 degrees but you would be the equivalent of having a 31 degree weight right here so that's how you can split the difference then you also get into the variance of the math I mean you could calculate 32 grams to be distributed between these two holes but in reality you can't with the bolt alone the nut and the washer get less than 14 grams so you can only shift it a little bitty bit but that's how you would go about doing it so we hope you found all this useful and informative when it comes to adding weight to your ring gears. And thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. And here's Linda Mongenet and Jan Blackman standing beside Ken's old airplane, November 5792 Lima.